Hi everybody, Mike Downey here on the Wirecast Gear 110. I love this piece of equipment. It has four HDMI inputs so I can bring in four different sources that I can do live production on and stream out to the web. But I'm not here to show you that. I'm here to show you some of the reasons why you need a post-production software on this piece of equipment, such as editing out a pre-show or repurposing the content that you just got through streaming to make shorter videos for social media or creating highlight reels from your live streams. There's lots of reasons to have it. And the post-production software I'm going to show you is Edius 8. Why? Because not only does Edius 8 do all this, but it does it extremely well and very, very quickly. So let's see how it works. As you can see, I've installed Edius directly on the Wirecast gear. The reason being is it's a very powerful computer and can handle anything that I can throw at it while editing, which I'm going to be showing you here in just a few moments. To start Edius 8, all I have to do is double click on it. And when it first comes up, all I have to do is pick new project and I have, have some presets in here, uh, all high definition, but you can have standard definition or anything that you would like. And then I'm going to pick a resolution. I am going to create a name for my project. And after I do that, I just select OK and the program comes up. First thing I'm going to do is bring in my footage. I'm in my bin window right here and it already has my first sequence and I can have multiple sequences, but for the sake of this demonstration, we're just going to leave it as one. I can right click inside the bin and select add file, or I can hit control O, or I can just double click with the left mouse button and it shows me my browser to be able to bring my footage in. This footage is directly from my Wirecast live production. I can bring the ISOs in directly without transcoding. So I pick camera one, camera two, and I'm ready to edit. Once these are in, I'm ready to use them. Now, if I come over here to where it says mode and I bring it down, you can see multi-cam mode, number of cameras, and sync point. Number of cameras, because I've only got two in this demonstration, I'm gonna select two plus master. Then underneath sync point, just so you know, asynchronous is when I don't have time code. I really don't have a way to be able to line them up automatically. So HDMI, that's what I'm going to be doing here. But I did want you to see that you can do it by time code. So if you have cameras that have time code and you have like the SDI inputs, then you'd be able to take any number of files and be able to line them up automatically with time code and start editing immediately. Now, the neat thing about this particular time code is, is let's say that you have cameras that have free run time code, that when they're not recording, it's continuing with the time code going. And you have one camera that's going around, you know, shooting something, stopping, shooting something, stopping. What's really neat about this is that if you have that, all those clips from that camera, when you bring them in, when you use time code, it will place them down onto one video track and space them correctly to where they are in the exact spots that they need to be. It's really quite impressive. I'm gonna leave mine as asynchronous right here because I'm just gonna bring down camera one onto the timeline to my first video and there's my audio right underneath it. Then I'm gonna bring down camera two onto the second video track and once again, there's my audio. I'm just gonna open up one channel on each one of the audios because I, to line this up, I need to be able to see my waveform. So after I do this, I'm gonna kind of stretch that out a little bit and you can see that I am off. So I need to move this camera two down to where finally I'm lined up. Once I'm lined up, I'm gonna go ahead and squeeze it in a little bit. And once I have it done, I'll test it. I invite you to exchange these rings. Now the sound is not the best on the second camera, but as you can see, there's no echo here. I've got it completely and totally done. Once I've done that, I have a choice. I can just turn off the audio on the second camera, or I can right click on it and just say delete parts. Now, once I go into the delete parts here, all I have to do is select uh, the audio clip, right? With no ripple and it makes it go away. And now I have my main audio down here and my two cameras up top. So let's start at the beginning and see how easy it is to do multi-camera here with Edius 8. 
Okay, we have our cameras lined up. We have our audio sitting down there, right? So what we want to do next in order to work in multicam and at ES8 is come up to mode, select it, and then select multicam mode. As you can see right here that it looks like I have only one camera. The other one is blank because of the fact, if you'll remember, we had to adjust camera two a little bit in order to make sure that the audio lined up. I have my master up here in the middle, and this is how easy it is to work in multicam mode. When I start to play it, all I have to do is pick the camera by clicking on it with the left mouse button. Or I can just in the number pad select the number of the camera, such as uh, camera 1, camera 2, all the way up to camera 16. Now, I'm doing this just by watching, and you can see that he's working with the young man right here, and he's putting the ring on her finger, so I have it sitting on this particular angle. But in just a moment, it's going to switch it to where it's her turn to be able to do it, and I want to have the camera that's more pointing towards her. So, notice that she's starting to do it. Oops, I'm a little bit late, but I switched the camera right there, and you can notice a little node that goes in right here, the little marker that comes in, and now I have it correctly on her. Then afterwards, when she says her thing and they do it, now he's talking to them a little bit more. I want to switch back over to this camera to give a little bit better angle of the uh, person, the officiator, doing the wedding. Now watch what happens when I stop. When I stop, it automatically cuts everything. In other words, wherever I picked camera number one, that's what's showing whenever I pick camera number two. But remember how we were a little late up here? That he's handing her the ring right now, right at that spot. And I went, man, I, I really needed to, to switch there. Watch what I can do here. All I have to do is grab that marker, pull it back, and look at that. It's done. Just that easy. In fact, I don't even need to wait. If I've shot this footage, I know what the footage is. I could actually kind of rush through this footage if I wanted to. And watch, all I have to do is go up to switch cameras, just double click on the camera and look at that. I can go to another spot right here and say, oh, I want to go to camera one now right there. And I can go through this footage very, very quickly if I wanted to and be able to switch back and forth between cameras. I don't have to sit there and wait and just play it out all at once. If I want to switch a camera, I just place the cursor where that camera is and switch the camera. It's just literally that easy. This is what I absolutely love about EDIUS is that it's fast, real time, and allows me to work very, very quickly. Okay, let's say that our video is finished and we want to output it to say, go to YouTube. We can't go to a file when we're in multicam mode. So I'm going to come up here just to show you that when I go back to mode, I can either hit F5 for normal or F8 again that will turn it off. Either way works fine. But once I'm back in normal mode, all I have to do is go to file, export, and then print to file or hit F11 and it would bring the same window up. To go out to YouTube, I would want to go to H.264 and you already have an iPad preset here. And if you check it out and it meets your requirements, then it's already there. But if you want to create your own preset, I would go to H.264, double click on it. And you can see right here that you have a lot of settings and extended settings that you can set. Once those are set, you can save them as a preset so that when you're ready to export, you could use it every single time. So let's say I have it all set up. I'm going to say Wirecast demo here. Once I put in the name, once I'm in the correct directory that I want to put it out to, I just select save. A little window comes up and you're going to see that it's going to save it here very, very quickly. It's a fact, a lot of times, depending upon the power of the computer, it's faster than real time when outputting to a file, as you can see that it's doing right here. It's going to do it in about 30 seconds and this video is over two minutes long. Now, it doesn't work that way with every single exporter there is, but it works with most of them that way. Once it's there, it automatically throws it into our bin window for us, but it's also in the directory where we saved it. So now we're ready to upload it to YouTube or wherever it is that we are going to be uploading it to. Videoguys.com is your source for streaming media and live production equipment, storage, and video editing hardware and software. We have specialized in video editing and production for more than 25 years. And our technicians are available to answer your questions and help you find the best solution for your needs and budget.